Hello, Tab Nation. It's your boy, Tom, and today we're going to be uh, talking about some variables that are built into auto hotkeys. Uh, and there, this will work in version 1, 2. Oh, my green screen's been a little weird there. Uh, but yeah, basically, uh, I've got a sample here. Uh, there are like, I mean, there's like a hundred, maybe more. I didn't really count. There's a lot. And I just kind of pick some just to give you an idea of what's out there. Uh, obviously, in the link below or description below, I'll put a link to uh, the documentation here because, as you can see, you know, here's kind of where the built in variables start. Yeah, you know, there's quite a bit. I mean, I'm still scrolling, scrolling. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely around 100 right there. Um, so yeah, definitely explore them a little bit better. Uh, this video would be way too long if I went through every single one and here trying to describe it to you. So just some examples here. Uh, but first, I want to show you how to actually see some of your variables. So right here, all you got to do in your code is put list vars. Um, and up here, I just made two uh, sample ones. One's called test, stores the data to. Able, stores the data beach. So to beach. Uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and run that just so we can see that first. And that's hotkey is F1, so I'm going to press that. And here we go. Um, so as you can see, it's kind of, you know, just showing you, uh, you know, here's that data, here's this data, um, what's it called, uh, and then what's it storing. So it's just kind of a quick way if you want to see every single variable in there. It's not the cleanest way, but it's a good way to do it really fast on the fly um so yeah <clears throat> um in this example just keep it simple um get the idea across we're just going to be using um message box um so here we got message box uh and then the variable so first one we're going to go ahead we're going to press f2 and it's just going to kind of run through them all so f2 uh, so this one is and most of them uh, are going to have an underscore here uh starting with a uh, so a underscore script dir directory. This is showing us the file path of where our script is being run from. And indeed, it is being run from my desktop. Um, so there is that. This is good for pointing at libraries or something. Uh, if you have the library in the same location as your script, uh, which I personally like doing, uh, this is a great way to just kind of grab that real quick. Um, the reason why is because, you know, as you can see, it says C users and then my name, Tom. If I share this script with someone, their username's not going to be the same as mine, or at least a very slim chance of that. So this is helpful in making your script more adaptable. And that's honestly why I use a lot of these builds and variables is for adaptability. Um, so I can share this across anybody, and as long as they put it on their desktop, uh, or the library in the same place as the script, it's always going to be able to find it. This is very helpful for yeah adapting to other people's uh, PC. We're going to press OK. We're going to go to number line 14. It is indeed line 14 where this message box is. So that's A underscore line number. Uh, this really is helpful more for like debugging. Um, <clears throat> you can put a few of these in your script for a like real quick uh, debugging. I don't recommend always using message boxes for debugging, um, but sometimes this is just a very quick, easy way to see something. Um, so I like using this every so often. Um, I'm sure it has other uses, but that's what I've used it for is like a very quick, simple debug um, problem where I'll put like it twice, see which one it hits. Because um, honestly, uh, this actually is pretty accurate. It is line 14. I know when I run auto hotkeys, uh, and there's like error on line like 15 and I look and I'm like, uh, there's no code on line 15. What's going on? <laughs> At least this one's accurate. Um, I don't know why it's like that. It's weird, but hey. All uh, right, next one is AHK uh, version. So obviously A underscore AHK version. Um, for this video, I'm doing 1.1, 1.37, A little out of date there. Um, but... That's fine. Um, this is great also for, you know, basically seeing what version uh, the user has on their computer. And then you can add an if after this uh, or during it saying basically like, oh, you're running, you know, 1.1. This script requires 1.18 you know, or something. 
um, just an example. <clears throat> Uh, it's just a way to, you know, basically say, like, look, you, you need to update your uh, HK, um, or maybe even saying, like, oh, this is version 2, you need to be using version 1, and vice versa. 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 What is that versa? Can't talk today. <laughs> uh, dates. <clears throat> so right now, I have A underscore YYYY. That's going to put the year in the four-digit format. Uh, you can get rid of, like, two of the Ys, and it'll just say 24, um, depending on how uh, you want it to display, really. And there's tons of these. As you can see, the next one I have here is a hour. It, it is, indeed, the ninth hour in the day. Uh, these I've used mostly for updates. Um, let's say I have uh, a timer going off every hour, uh, checking what hour it is, because I need it to perform some certain action but i want to make sure nobody yet is at work so i might have it go off and be like oh if it's you know 2 a.m in the morning nobody's in the office let's run whatever i'm supposed to be doing knowing that's not going to interrupt anybody's uh, <clears throat> uh current job um, i've also used this for uh updates i've had a lot of issues with people who they'll report a bug and it's like well yeah, we fixed that, like, months ago. Why are you still getting it? Oh, you are haven't upgraded your script in how long? So this was something I used where I had a timer go off maybe once every so often and say, like, okay, look, every seven days just check for an update and then force the update upon them because that became, like, a huge issue. I've, I actually had one person I remember one time had this weird glitch, and I was like, I, I swear I fixed it, I haven't heard anybody else report it, we looked at it, and it was like, you're literally running the program from, like, an entire year ago. Have you not restarted your computer in an entire year? And sure enough, all we had to do was update, <laughs> and so that's when I added, you know, that kind of functionality, because it was crazy. But there is a ton of, um, date ones in here as you can see let me show you real quick just to give you an idea yeah here's a date and time right here so as you see there's there's a good amount of variety so you can adjust to what you want let's bring that message box back all right up next is idle time or sorry a underscore time idle uh 15 uh this is in milliseconds i believe um this is basically saying how long has it been since I haven't even touched my keyboard or my mouse. So how long has my computer not been doing like anything um, or I've been interacting with it really is a good way to say it. This is good also for stuff like that. If you want to say like, look, the person's been away from their computer for half an hour. Obviously you have to do a little math because it's in milliseconds. Uh, you know, perform an action. Um, the only time I've ever used this one is uh, once again at another job. Uh, we have very, uh, you know, important information on our computers a lot of times that, you know, others weren't allowed to see. Um, so it's very important to lock your computer anytime you stepped away from it, even if it was just to uh, go talk to the person in the cubicle next to you, like you had to lock your computer. And obviously, you know, that's a hard habit to um, get on a daily basis so one thing I did is I made a script that did this where if I was gone from my computer and didn't interact for a certain amount of time it would just automatically lock the computer for me which was like uh, the Windows key and L would just do it so I just had that do that where yeah it automatically lock it that was huge uh, help for me uh, next we got a prior hotkey so obviously the last hotkey I pushed was F1 so I pushed up to here. This is looking at the previous one. This can be used for like ifs. Um, honestly, I would rather make my own variables with something like this, kind of like a toggle. Uh, but, you know, you might want to know what the last hotkey was pressed and you could put an if in there. Like if last hotkey equals F1, perform this action instead uh, if they had pushed, you know, F2 or something. So that could be helpful for, uh, I see that being used more like in gaming, kind of a little bit of a different version of a toggle in a way. I'm um, just using an if statement. Meh. All right, next up is OS version. So I am running version 10. This kind of goes to the same idea up above where it's kind of like, look, 
you're running Windows 95, uh, yeah, you kind of need to upgrade to use this script because you're going to have issues. Uh, yes, Auto Hotkeys does work on Windows 95, by the way. Uh, just throwing that out there. I don't know how well because I don't have Windows 95 anymore. Uh, so yeah, if you have one, record a video of you using Auto Hotkeys on it. Let me know how it works. I would love to see that and send it to me on my uh, About tab. I have some ways to contact me. Uh, next is A Language. Um, now, this one, out of all the ones I'm showing you today, is probably one of my favorites. Um, I'm actually going to be doing a video uh, going into this a little bit in um, basically how to make your scripts more universal. You know, obviously, all my scripts are being done in English. But this is a great idea of how you could make it so your script can work in multiple languages. So I'll be doing a video uh, shortly on that. So watch out for that. So make sure you subscribe. Throwing out a video every week uh, having to do with automation, usually an auto hotkey. But we do branch out from time to time just so you can learn, expand, and grow. Last but not least, this is probably one of the ones I've used by far the most is just A underscore clipboard. So here you can see I'm uh, assigning the vi uh, variable clipboard. I'm just putting hello world. So it's obviously just going to display hello world. This one, I mean, honestly, out of everybody I've known, this is probably the one they've used by far the most. Uh, this is the one if you need to know any and memorize any single built-in variable this is the one to memorize is a underscore clipboard yeah definitely remember that one um two more i'm going to show you real quick um there's obviously a bunch of different ones this is another one that helps with uh, adapting your script to work on other people's computers is you know a my underscore uh, my documents and then as i was saying before a underscore desktop this is a great way to just point at a specific folder. Maybe you need to save, uh, they run the script for the first time and it needs to create an INI file. You want it to go to my A underscore my documents. Um, this will automatically point regardless of their username. So like I said, my username is not gonna be the same as yours. This is a great way to just point directly at the file. You want something to be saved or stored uh, without having to know too much information about their uh, computer uh, directory. Uh, there's obviously a few other ones, um, but this one's another one that I use quite a lot. Uh, it helps a lot with pointing at where you need to. All right, everybody. Hopefully, uh, this was helpful. Uh, check out the link in the description. Lots more. Um, obviously, I've already gone over a little bit longer on this. Um, but yeah, so I'll cut it off and see you all on the next one.